Oh, shoot. He just won a Super Bowl. I don't think you really need to say more than that than he's a world champion. He is the first first round pick, Kansas City Chiefs, and what, the first Greek player to ever win a Super Bowl. George Karloftis. Am I getting all that right? First Greek player to win a Super Bowl? Not first Greek that's player what, to be in the NFL. That's what they're saying. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. That's what, that's what people are saying. I think it's first Greek born. Greek born. <laughs> There's been other people of Greek descent, but I, I, I was actually born and raised in Greece, so I think that's where the uh, difference lies. Have you met the guys in the back offices that do this this research to find this stuff out? Because like... <laughs> I don't know. No, I haven't. I don't know who found it out. I know uh, I got tagged on it. Purdue football tweeted us. It's like, all right, there's some legitimacy there. Might have, might have started out with some people on Reddit or something just – yeah. <laughs> in the depths of the internet, but somebody found it and, you know, somebody legitimized it, obviously. So, well, the Greek people are proud and they're proud of you. And I think that is something to celebrate, you know, when one of your own uh, is able to do what you did. And, and it's like, you're just not there going to a Super Bowl. You're an amazing football player. Like your career at Purdue and, uh, and even what you did in your rookie season, you're, you're, you're going to like, I'm going to put this conversation aside for the day you go into the Hall of Fame because you've got that kind of talent. And I'm not the only one that says this. I mean, you're you're a beast on the edge. Yeah, I, I appreciate it, man. I just, uh, you know, ever ever since I uh, was introduced to this game, I think eight, eight nine years ago, uh, you know, I, I, I fell in love, you know, almost uh, to the point of addiction, yeah. you know. And it's it's uh, obsession, addiction, you know, whatever you want to call it. And this. It's something I love to do, you know, and I found a, a real balance between uh, my faith, I'm Greek Orthodox, my family, and uh, football, you know, so for me, that's that's what my life really consists of, and, uh, you know, try to, try to treat all those things equally, and, you know, this, it's been a really good balance for me, and I, uh, I absolutely love the game. And you didn't start playing until you were 13, right? Uh, I think fourteen. Fourteen, yeah. yeah. So you know, you know, I was thinking about that. There, there's, there's something to it. Now, I didn't start playing football till I was thirteen, but I have, I had nowhere near the caliber of talent that you have. But there is something to be said about the guys that played it their entire lives, where you and I think even today more than ever, because you know your generation has got an even shorter attention span. You know, and that's just yeah. because of the way the world works. It's not a shot. It's just the way the world works. So I think, like, if you were to start playing in, like, Pee Wee at five or six, you get burned down a lot faster. I mean, that's tacking on another almost 10 years of playing football. Yeah. I think there's something to that, you know, and uh, something I talk with people about pretty often is the fact that I, I played multiple sports. I grew up playing multiple sports, just just about everything. You know, water, I, water polo was something I, I was really big into, Greece, track and field since I was a really young kid. Uh, basketball, tennis, soccer, everything you could possibly think of. You know, I, I was, uh, I, you know, that's what I like to do. I, I like to play sports growing up. So, you know, I think that just like you said, a diverse background growing up so that you don't get, you know, you're not just into one sport growing up. You just have that, that diverse background, kind of trying everything out, see what you really love. I think that, uh, that, that really helps out. And, you know, the, the getting burnt out part, you know, it's just like after the season, you know, we, we're going at it for 26, 27, 28 weeks, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, just doing the same thing and same schedule, you know, and all that stuff. So the bye weeks really help uh, in the NFL. And now after the season, now that we're in the postseason, you know, just – or in the off season now, I guess, uh, just got to take some time off, just relax, rest, uh, you know, and all that stuff so so that doesn't happen. Yeah, do, uh, do a little decompression, yeah, right? You got to yeah, relax the brain. Exactly, but I think there's some too, you know, starting football a little younger and not being burnt out. It's more fresh to you. It's more new to you. You have more things to learn, and uh, you know, a lot, a lot of it's uh, based on physical ability. Either way, so right, it depends. So you 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 win the biggest, you know, achievement in your rookie season, which I've always thought that was the coolest thing ever like for you know and i never get to talk to i mean a year of sports talk radio but i don't think i ever talked to anybody that won a super bowl in their rookie season i mean it's like you can only go down from there you know <laughs> there's a, there's a lot more to go but your rookie season was different i mean you played like a first round pick for the kansas city chiefs i mean they picked you 
for a reason. Um, yeah. You know, the, the, I remember in the draft, there was conversations of, you know, going receiver. I don't think that it had been announced that Tyreek had been traded or not yet during the draft, but there was talk like getting a receiver, getting a receiver. And you guys ended up getting Sky Moore, which is great. I thought he would have a, had a bigger year than what he did, actually. But that walk from where you're with your family and they call your name to get to the podium to get with Roger Goodell seemed like it took forever. <laughs> That was, the, that was a long walk. That was a long walk, uh, kind of running the back in my mind right now, you know. It was, uh, you're really happy. You're trying to process that, that you know, because when you're drafted, you don't really know where you're going to go. You're like, all right, these teams are really interested, so I might be able to go to this team or this team or that team, you know. Um, you know, you're thinking, oh, Kansas City, you know, what are, you know what's that? Uh, you know, is it, so, like, I, I – you're trying to wrap your head around everything, you know, the defense, your teammates, where you're going to live, you know, the, the team and everything like that. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a long walk, long walk. It, 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 at the bottom line at the end of the day, you're just, you're just happy. It's just you know? so exciting. You get, like, and the draft, in the draft, we went defense for the most part. Yeah. You know, I think that that showed we had a lot of youth, not well, only in our defense, but in our team. And, uh, I think that was a, that was a good thing. And, you know, it's going to be good for the next few years, for sure. For sure. You definitely proved me wrong in the Super Bowl. I did not think it was going to end that way. <clears throat> not too many people did. Not too many people did. But that's what uh, we've kind of done all year. Uh, you know, people didn't think we'd uh, win the AFC West. People didn't think mm. we'd make it to the playoffs. People actually thought we'd finish last in the AFC West. Um mm. You know, yeah. just kind of what we do. Uh, you know, you practice with Mahomes all the time. Um now after the Super Bowl, uh, even if you are a Kansas City Chiefs hater, uh, you have to have the utmost respect. I mean, you know the guy's got not just talent, but superhero talent. And then you watch the tenacity and you watch the intestinal fortitude. You watch all that. You watch the pure athlete in Patrick Mahomes the second half of the Super Bowl when you knew his ankle was bum. And he heard it again even more, and it just disappeared because he's mentally that strong. I mean, that's yeah. just next-level shit, right? No question. Yeah. No question. I mean, he's in a – right now he's in a league of his own, and he has been for quite some time. You know, he could do everything as a football player. There's nothing he can't do, and he's uh, he's going to finish as one of the best, best players of all time. I agree with that. I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. And so um, let's talk about the game itself. You know, leading up to the game, you know, you got a, a full week or two, you know, of, of all the media and the talking heads and people asking silly questions and trying to get sound bites from you guys. Are you guys prepped for that experience, especially if you've not done it before, like yourself, um, before the Super Bowl? Not necessarily prepped. You know, the, the, the coaches and our communications, people that handle the, the media and all that stuff, they – they kind of alert us like, hey, you know, it's going to be a lot between practice and media. There's going to be a lot of funky questions. Uh, just be ready for it. It's going to be a lot. You know, just be respectful. Don't give the other team any bulletin board material. Give them all the praise. And, uh, you know, just just keep your uh, keep your focus on just that we're there to win a game. And that's it at the end of the day. Yeah. I, I read something that Travis Kelsey had said, which I think – in my mind will go down as one of the classiest things I've ever seen uh, an athlete say. He said that Jalen, and paraphrasing, Jalen Hurts could have won the MVP of the Super Bowl even with the loss. I just thought that was so classy. Absolutely. I mean, he he played his ass off. Yeah. You know, he, he heck of a player. We have a lot of respect for him. And just, just like Patrick said, if there's, you know, if there was any doubters before uh, the Super Bowl, there shouldn't be any doubters now. You know, we, we have a lot of respect for him as a defense. He presents a lot of problems because, you know, guys with, with dual threat quarterbacks, the uh, the misconceptions like, oh, yeah, they can't. They're just athletes. You know, they can't really throw. Well, he can prove that he can do it all. Mm. Uh, and he's done that all year. And we, we knew that. I think the world knows now. So he's uh, – you know, he, he's one of those uh, elite guys, you know, when you talk about when you talk quarterbacks in the league, I think. What was the locker room pep talk and who gave it before you guys went out? You know, I don't, I don't, we don't necessarily do all that, all that stuff. 
you know, if you're not ready to do the soup, if you're not ready to play in the Super Bowl, you're not ready to hyped up on your own. There's something wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like what everybody dreams of, you know, for the, the whole year and most guys for their whole lives, you know. So, uh, you know, it's kind of like, all right, let's go, let's go win this game. You know, it was more, more in that, more along those lines. Um, you know, halftime, you know, there was some adjustments needed to be made, you know, because we weren't. Uh, doing so hot, or we didn't, we just didn't play like we thought we were capable of. Mm. Um, so we had, we had to do a couple of things differently. Just, it was more lying on execution, really. Uh, so we just took a step back and said, hey guys, calm down. Let's, uh, let's, let's go out there and execute. And, uh, you know, it turned out to be in our favor. Would it be uh, a real shot to you if you lose any of the coaching staff on the defensive side of the ball moving forward or? As a professional athlete, that's just kind of status quo. You get used to it. I mean, there, there's two sides to that, right? I, I love all of our coaches. You know, I love Spags. I love my defensive line coach, Joe Cullen, and I, all the other position coaches, you know. So, yeah, it, anytime something like that happens, it hurts. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't think anything like that's came out, but I, I understand the question. Uh, you know, yeah, it, it hurts. Whenever you lose – a player, a coach, whatever the case may be, you know, everyone talks like, hey, this this team will never be the same just because of the turnover in the NFL. Um, but, yeah, it's the reality of the situation and, and the reality of the uh, the profession. Uh, so, you know, you kind of just roll with the punches and, you know, you just uh, you keep moving forward regardless of what happens. Yeah, I, I always wanted to know that, too. You know, I, I got some friends that are intertwined <clears throat> with the Steelers organization and, you know, years ago when they had different offensive coordinator changes and whatnot, you could see it. I mean, it was, it was plain as day on the field and, you know, talking with them, they're just like, it's just not the same. We just don't get it. You know, it's just, we're not performing, you know, and every year of your guy's career is the most important year of your lives. Cause you don't know if you're going to have another year. And, and, and so you've got to, yeah. every year is you've got to win the Super Bowl, Right. I mean, that's exactly. kind of mindset. I think, I, I think it's underappreciated and undervalued by, by most people how much of an effect a position coach or just one player can have on the team. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I know, you know, we, we got a new position coach on the D line and uh, you know, I, I know the guys that will say like that he made a huge, huge impact on the team. It's in, in, our, in our defensive line, you know, we had some moving pieces on the staff and uh, you know, that, that worked out really well you know the linebackers got the d-line coach and they absolutely loved him so everybody meshed great together uh and you know they everyone worked in perfect harmony you know it was all it all, it all just clicked for us you yeah. know and uh you know even with the even with the guys on the team uh you know we had a few a few veterans you know on our team uh but we had a lot of young guys so that really balanced itself out well and i don't think people <clears throat> appreciate well if you're not a if you're not a football, if you don't know football, you're not going to appreciate like what you do. I mean, you know, as a defensive end, your your part of your job is not necessarily to be unless you're you know third and long and you're going after the quarterback. You need to take you need to keep guys off the backers. So like your right. your that's part of that's one of your responsibilities. I mean, a defensive end really only has three responsibilities, and you do such a good job of that and and. And it even amazes me as the, you know, the pros behind the microphones that are doing this, like who am I to say, but they don't bring that to the, uh, to, to the fans attention more of what each position does, because it's not always about sacks and tackles and interceptions and, yeah. and, and stuff like that. It's about making sure Chris Jones is open or able to, to, to make the tackle or it's a, it's a, absolutely right. Yeah, it's, you know like, it's, a, it's a, it's a, it's a team game, you know, when it's, a lot of the time, like if you see, you know, a great guy like Chris or, you know, a guy like myself and, you know, you, on the stat sheet, you don't have anything. You zero, zero, zero. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you had a bad game. Mm -mm. Not, know, at all. not necessarily, at least. Right. You know, maybe you had a specific task. You know, for me, uh, speaking broadly, as a defensive end, what, what's my task? To stop the run, mm -hmm. to drop when asked and to rush the passer and how do you rush the passer you got to earn that right by stopping the run to get them in those pass rushing situations you know those third and long second and long type situations so we can get after the quarterback because that's you know that's what everybody wants to do in my position uh so you got to be good at doing everything else yeah. that's how that's how it kind of works you know and stopping the run isn't sexy it's uh it's 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 a grind and uh it gets dirty and nasty in there uh you know, but at the end of the day, you're just trying to 
trying to stop the run, maybe create a pile, mm. uh, get the guy down, you know, but whether it's just yourself or five other guys with you. Um, and those, you know, you see the sacks, you see the PBUs, you know, those happen on the, those pass rushing type situations. And, you know, that's what the fans really like. And, and we, we love playing those situations too, but, uh, you know, that's just a part of the game. Just like you said, it, it, one of my favorite things was to, to trail, uh, or to, to, to take the tackle, the, the pulling tackle, you know, head on and take out his leg. And it was just always the cleanest, cleanest hit. You know, because these big, bulky, goofy guys are, uh, you know that, and you're down low, and you just swoop up, and your 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 job is to, you know, obviously block the hole, and that was always like it, it wasn't sacking the quarterback, it wasn't making a tackle, blocking a pass. I was never athletic enough to drop back, but it was just that was my favorite thing to do was to, yeah right was to take the leg out of the pulling tackle. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah, now, now, you know, specifically towards, you know, any, any kind of a gap scheme play with a, with, a, with a tackle or a guard or even a center sometimes pulls, uh, you know, that, that's kind of like the wrong, wrong arm type technique. Uh, that's a little more uh, old school to kind of put it at that. <laughs> now what you're kind of taught is to be able to go inside and if he bounces out, you can play both. Mm-hmm. But what offenses did that since they know that we're doing that is – They'll bring the tight end and he'll actually cut you because you have to stay square. Oh, and that, that so he'll cut you and then he'll take you out. You know, so you have to be able able to combat that. Whether it's you take him out before he takes you out, or be able to avoid him. So there's there's that that chess game, that game theory uh, that goes on within within the game with uh, you know I, I guess a guard or attack could do that too. But there's uh, there's that. I, I got to tell you, out of every time that somebody has said something that I was out of touch with, whether it's pop culture, music, or movies, I've never quite felt so old at 47 than when George Karloftis just told me I was old for my defensive end tactics. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all good. It's funny. Um, did you get it? I'm, I'm assuming the answer to this is no, but, you know, along with the Super Bowl, the festivities of the halftime show, um, I heard a rumor that uh, was it Andy Reid that said if you guys take a peek out or something you're in trouble or or if you have anything to do with the halftime show you're in trouble. Did you guys take yeah, a peek? I mean, no, no, nobody took a peek. Uh, you know, it was uh, I think it was in reference to Rihanna, like they're like yeah, you know, halftime show because you go through like the logistics uh, when you first get there in Phoenix that Sunday night or that Monday. You know, they they kind of go over you know. Uh, scheduling wise the media during the game you know there's a longer pre-game there's a longer halftime so just being prepared and just uh when they were presenting that they're like yeah the halftime shows rihanna so everyone started going crazy you know Woo! you know and uh coach Rita, just so you know you know whoever peaks uh uh, you know, goes over there and watch the halftime show. You might as well just stay out there because you're not coming back. You're not coming back and watching. You're not going back out or so, something to that extent. Uh, you know, so so no. To answer your question, nobody went out there and watched. Uh, but it was so loud that in the locker room we were able to hear. You know, because it's we have a 30 minute halftime. We usually have like an eight or 10 minute halftime. So you have points in time where you're just eating or stretching and just not really talking or doing anything. Uh, because of that, that performance, so you, you're able to hear a little bit, but nobody, nobody even thought of uh, going out going there. Out there. Uh, I have a, a good buddy of mine who uh, played for the San Francisco 49ers, and he was on before the Super Bowl. He uh, was part of the dynasty days, uh, Randy Cross, who you know he actually hiked the ball to Joe Montana, and so he's got three rings. And we, when we had him on uh, a couple weeks ago, we, we talked about the halftime. You know, normal game eight, nine minutes, you're in, you get talked to, you're out. You don't really cool down all that much. And if you are, it's easy to get back warm. 30 minutes is a whole new world. And Randy was saying they actually train you guys going into the Super Bowl how to ha- handle halftime because of how long Absolutely. it is. Absolutely. Is that true? Yeah, they, they, go, they go over a lot. You know, you have a lot more time, just like you said. So you, you got to make sure you get something to eat. You got to get back warmed up. Uh, you have a lot more time for adjustments. So, you know, at first you just sit down, kind of take to yourself, get a couple extra breaths, whatever the case may be. You might roll out, you might stretch. Guys that are feeling a little banged up might need to get with the uh, trainers or the chiropractor, whoever the case may be. So you have a lot more time 
which uh, if used correctly, could be a huge benefit. Yeah. Hypothetically speaking, if you were not a professional football player and you were an official for the NFL, would you have called the holding call at the end of the game? Did he hold him? Uh, yeah, that's how you guys got into field goal range. So, I mean, that's what they said at least, right? I think it was pretty clear cut that he hold him. He, he did, he and, he, and he admitted it. I don't think that's – why is that a debate? Uh, I, just because it, ha- so, it happened in the fourth quarter doesn't change that that's the call. If it would have happened in the first quarter, it would have been the same call and nobody would have been – complaining about it so i don't know why oh yeah it's a it's a it's a pivotal time of the game we're just not going to call what's right i just i don't understand that so so greg olson who was on on commentary in the game made a big deal about you know like it was ticky tacky or something now even he admitted he held so i mean it, you're right yeah, that's, it's, it's, it's that's that just the it's the right call regardless of whether it's ticky tacky or you know, it's 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 too big of a moment to make a call like that and all that stuff. It's it's the right call. Mm-hmm. You know, so and the uh, other yeah. the other argument is that the ball was uncatchable, but in the rule book, that has nothing to do with the call. Yeah, so I don't. You know, they, they're making a big deal about it. If if what whatever, game's over. We won. It's- <laughs> Have you gotten used to the storyline stuff where the media tries to make a bigger deal of things than what it is? Because you know, you have to know, you're a smart guy. You know that there has to be more than the game in order to attract eyes and ears to the sport. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I think there, there's a big there's a big element with that. I think they make a big deal out of a lot of things, but they also met the, the media, the People on on social, whoever the case may be, right. make a big deal about certain things, but other things, you know, where you see where we where we think it's a big deal, they don't even notice. You know, uh, I know for us, you know, earlier in the year, Chris Jones had that one uh, sack on uh, maybe it was a Derek Carr, and they called it sack fumble. They called it unnecessary roughness or roughing the quarterback, and it was like, what the heck? Yeah, you know, I think from from and that's from a defensive end's perspective. I'm sure every position has those. Those things, you know, and the, those game-changing plays at the end of the day. But, uh, you know, it's, it's all up to the refs, you know. And we're going to wh- – whatever they call it's not – it's not like you could do much other than, than challenge it. You know, all the, the complaining and going up to them and talking is not really going to change their minds. Uh, so, I, just like I said, ro- you got to roll with the punches. I, I don't know how you guys do it on the defensive side of the ball. It's almost like you're playing two games. You're playing one game of football and one game – to make sure it doesn't look like you're doing whatever. I mean, it's a, it's the NFL has kind of turned into a lot of perception is reality. Um, and, and, you know, some of these, you know, quarterback hits or it's, it's the game. I mean, that's what you do. I mean, it's, it's not like you're out there trying to, t- trying to yeah. kill them, kill them. It's not bounty gate again. You know, it's nothing like that. Yeah. I don't, I, I understand where the, the uh, rules are coming into effect. I think, some of the, I think some of the time they could be a little uh, I don't know what the right word is, but you know when you put your weight into someone while you really sh- you know couldn't or shouldn't have you know or could have prevented it, I think that's where it comes into effect. You know, a lot of time you have the late those hits, so they're you're within a step or two, which is legal, but then you go ahead and slam it and put your weight into him, and they'll call that you know because you didn't need to do that. You know, on a sack, you know, he's holding the ball. Uh, for the most part, it's fair game. Uh, you know, just don't, just don't absolutely try to demolish them. I think that's, I don't know if that's fair, but that's that's reasonable. And you know, with those changes, you can prepare accordingly. You know, you could do drills in practice where you, where you hit someone and you, you pull off, you know, mm-hmm. just so you don't get a, a penalty for your team to negate the great thing you did. So just, you know, just because those rules are, you, you got to change your preparation a little bit, but not nothing crazy. You just got to be a little more conscious. What did you do to celebrate after winning the Super Bowl? We had a little, uh, you know, in the, in the locker room. I mean, we were there till late, you know, right. maybe till eleven o'clock midnight, you know, Arizona time. Uh, so you know, we were there for a while, you know, just partying, going crazy, and then they had an after party at the hotel. Um, you know, then guys went their own ways from there. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. Are you a party guy or are you just kind of chill? Not, not really. Not yeah. really, to be honest, no. Yeah. Because you, you have, a, like, a, a steady girlfriend, right? You've been going out for a while. So you just like, yeah. won the Super Bowl, honey. Let's go grab some macaroni and 
Watch some Netflix. No, 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 no. I mean, my, my family was there. Uh, yeah. You know, I had my family there, friends there. Uh, no, that's not one of those types of nights. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're going out, you're hanging out with the guys, uh, with your family, with your loved ones. So, yeah, it was, it was a good night. Are you able to – I never was able to do this in my 20s, and I even struggle with it in my 40s, is to live the day. And, you, you like, we can't even fathom what it's like to be on that field and when the clock goes to zero and win – the, the in my opinion, the most prestigious championship that there is just because I'm a football fan. Are you able to absorb that moment and still understand how big it is? You sure as heck try. You know, I I know for me after the game, I didn't want to do any interviews. I think I only did like one or two. We usually do a bunch after the regular game. Uh, I just want to like look as I, I just want to enjoy the moment. I just want to live in here and not even like pull out my phone and record like, like most people do nowadays, you know, like you see the when LeBron broke the scoring record, like you see the picture and everyone's like on their phones, like, oh my gosh, he just broke the record. Like it's not on video already. <laughs> um, so for me, it's like this, this, this is my camera, you know, my eyes. Uh, and that's how I like want to take in and absorb things, you know, just like take a deep breath and just like, wow, like we, we really just did something, uh, you know, take it in for myself, you know, the, the, those moments, you know, me going back on, uh, on my camera roll and like, Oh yeah, like that was great. You know, it's nothing like me physically being able to remember it and really just like, yeah, we, we really did that. You know, and that for me, that was, that was huge. Yeah. Very cool. Um, have you started a, a rivalry with any quarterback yet in the NFL. And I, and let me get, let me give you kind of a backstory behind this. I've all, I always thought it was cool. The Warren sat Brett Favre when they played the base, played each other back in the day and the, 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 the trash talking between them, but there was so much respect between them, the yeah. defensive guy and the quarterback. Have you started anything with any other quarterback where there's a little back and forth? No, no, I'm not. I'm not a big trash talker for that matter. None of us really on the D line are big trash talkers. Um, you know, maybe a couple guys here and there. You know, we we go out there for one job and it's to win the game. Yeah. Uh, but no, 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 not yet. I mean, maybe eventually that'll happen. Uh, for me, my rookie year is just to to do my job, help the team win in any way I can. Um, so yeah, I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't like I had a, oh, yeah, like, like screw you, man, or whatever the case may be. Uh, I didn't know, you know if there was so. anything that carried over from college or something like that, or you're like, ah, I'm going to get no, you. No, I don't. I don't think I played any quarterback in college that I did in the NFL, now I'm thinking about it. Mm -hmm. You know, something that might might transpire, you know, more likely to transpire is a defensive end with an offensive tackle. Right. Uh, that hasn't happened yet for me just because I've only played for one year and this the same effect of the quarterback. But uh, that certainly may happen. You know, I know some guys, you know, just well, you know, like each other because they played against each other so many times. And, you know, <laughs> but at the end of the day, you have respect for almost everybody in the league, you know, especially guys you go against and you, you know, they're, they're good players. At the end of the day, you have respect for them. And then you fast forward, th you know, 30, 40 years when you guys are putting on your golden jackets and you got the gray streaks in your hair and you're like, remember, remember when we would just start scratching each other's eyes out back in the day? It was a good time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, on Instagram, if you want to follow George, at George uh, Carl Loftus, um, and we'll have that when we post some stuff via uh, all of our social media. Brother, it, it's so cool. Like, when I got offered this opportunity to talk to you, I was like, hell yeah, dude, this is awesome. Um, I'm so happy for you. You're such a great guy, and you have such a long um, amazing career you're a beast you are an absolute beast so congratulations that, to you thanks. your team and your family and uh thanks again for coming on i appreciate it george thank you man thank you for having me this is great hey thanks buddy congrats dude that's awesome now, i know you got a lot of media stuff to do but thank you so much yeah. bro thank you absolutely thank you man Take have care, a good one bye-bye